next concept is analytic functions the name itself indicating what the functions also will become analytic let's see the definition to gain the definition we have to consider a function so consider a function f of z for the complex variable z and also consider a center point i considered that as z naught if this function is differentiable not only at center point but also differentiable at all points or some neighbor points of z naught then we can say this function is analytic see the definition a function f of z of the complex variable z is said to be analytic at a point z naught if this function f of z is differentiable not only at center point z naught but at each point in some neighbor points of z naught this is the definition for analytic function we may call analytic has holomorphic and regular that is first note see analytic is also called holomorphic and regular that means we may call analytic has holomorphic and regular in this definition what we gain the main point here analytic means the function should be differentiable at all points including the center point suppose this function is differentiable at all points except the center point then we can say this function is called isolated singularity that is second note see if a function f of z is analytic or differentiable in every neighbor points of z not except the center point then z not is called isolated singularity of f of z that means if the function is differentiable at all points except the center point we can call f of z as isolated singularity here also we can see the necessary and sufficient conditions for the functions f of z to become analytic we will see the first necessary condition the necessary condition for the function f of z to be analytic that means this function will become analytic if this satisfies the necessary condition what is the necessary condition see here if a function f of z is equals to u plus psi v we can express u as u of x comma y and v as v of x comma y is analytic in a domain d then the partial derivatives ux vx uy vy should exist and also satisfies the equations ux is equals to vy and uy is equals to minus vx this is the necessary condition for the function f of z to become analytic or we can say if these two conditions are satisfied then we can say f of z is analytic here ux vx uy vy are, are all partial derivatives that we can express as do u by do x that means ux we can express partial derivative of u with respect to x and u y we can express as partial derivative of u with respect to y like that v x is partial derivative of v with respect to x v y is partial derivative of v with respect to y and also i told u x is equals to v y u y is equals to minus v x these equations we call c r equations or Cauchy Riemann equations if these two conditions are satisfied then we can say f of z is analytic let's see the proof what's the given data here given f of z is analytic write down the given data given f of z is equals to u plus i v is analytic in a domain or closed curve then what is the analytic definition what's mean by analytic analytic means differentiable what is the differentiable formula we have three alternative differentiable formula but to prove this theorem i will consider one alternative differentiable formula that is f dash of z is equals to limit of delta z tending to zero f of z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z exist finitely or unique irrespective of the path in which delta z tending to zero irrespective of the path means whatever the path also you have to consider put this as equation 1 and we have f of z is equals to u plus i v do the increment for z here that means f of z changes to f of z plus delta z that means we are doing the small increment for z 
if i did the increment for z i should do the increment for x and y also so u of x comma y changes to u of x plus delta x comma y plus delta y and v of x comma y changes to v i into v of x plus delta x comma y plus delta y and also we know that z is equals to x plus psi y this is the complex variable we can express this as delta z is equals to delta x plus i into delta y that means i wrote it in the increment formula put all these values in equation 1 what is the equation 1 see this is the equation 1 f dash of z is equals to limit of delta z tends to 0 f of z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z so put f of z plus delta value here that means f of z plus delta z value this one so put this value in f of z plus delta z minus f of z what's the value of f of z is u plus i v that means u of x comma y plus i into v of x comma y put it here divided by delta z delta z is what delta x plus i into delta y so put this in denominator and put this as equation 2 next take delta z along x axis and along y axis first you take along x axis see let delta z be wholly real real means along x axis along real x axis means delta y equals to 0 delta y becomes 0 and then delta z value changes to what see if i put delta y value 0 then delta z becomes delta x so delta z value is delta x put all these in equation 2 that is f dash of z is equals to limit of delta z tending to 0 changes to delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0 but i didn't write delta y tends to 0 because i got delta value here 0 and also i wrote delta x tending to 0 delta y tends to 0 instead of delta z tending to 0 because in RHS side we having only x and y terms so that's why I am changing delta z tends to 0 as delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0 but here we can't write delta y tends to 0 because delta y value is 0 then write down the numerator value as it is what we got in the equation 2 and divided by delta x plus psi into delta i value delta y value is delta x because delta y value is 0 take the real and imaginary part separately that means f dash of z is equal to limit of delta x tends to 0 u of x plus delta x comma y minus u of x comma y divided by delta x here delta y is 0 plus limit of delta x tends to 0 i into coefficient of i values put it here that is v of x plus delta x comma y here delta y is 0 minus v of x comma y divided by delta x then we can write this as dou u by dou x because we having x plus delta x with u including subtraction of u of x comma y so we can write this as dou u by dou x partial derivative formula plus i into we can express this as dou v by dou x because we having x plus delta y with the v including subtraction of v of x comma y so we can write this as dou u by dou x plus i into this as dou v by dou x put it equation 3 take as it is along y axis that means again taking delta z tends to 0 along imaginary axis imaginary axis means along y axis along y axis means delta x goes to 0 then delta z becomes i into delta y because delta x is 0 here put this these all in equation 2 then equation 2 changes to f dash of z is equals to limit of delta y tends to 0 we can't write delta x tends to 0 because delta x is equals to 0 here then take or write the numerator as it is what we wrote in the equation 2 then denominator delta z changes to i into delta y because we got delta z value here i into delta y so here also take real and imaginary part separately 
then we got f dash of z is equal to limit of delta y tends to 0 u of x comma y plus delta y that means here delta x is 0 minus u of x comma y divided by i into delta y plus limit of delta y tends to 0 i into write on the coefficients of y that means v of x comma y plus delta y that means here i put delta x is 0 minus v of x comma y divided by i into delta y we can express this as dou u by the y because here we having y plus delta y with u along the subtraction of u of x comma y this is the partial derivative formula so we can express this as dou u by dou y plus we can express this as dou v by dou y so take here 1 by i common and also here i i cancel so we got finally f dash of z is equals to so 1 by i into dou u by dou y plus i i cancel here dou v by dou y next shift i to the numerator we got minus i that means f dash of z is equal to minus i dou u by dou y plus dou v by dou i. Put this as equation 4. Observe equation 3 and 4. We are getting LHS are equal. So easily we can say RHS also equal. So from 3 and 4 RHS are equal. Write on the RHS that is dou u by dou x plus i into dou v by dou x is equals to minus i into dou u by dou y plus dou v by dou y. That means what? We are getting the partial derivatives here. While solving the theorem, we are getting the partial derivative. That means first condition of the theorem satisfied. That means partial derivatives exist here. So next, take the real and imaginary part separately. We got real part is dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y. And dou v by dou x is equal to minus dou u by dou y. This is imaginary part. We can write this as dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. That means shifted minus to this side. See, we can express dou u by dou x as ux that is equal to dou v by dou y means vy. And dou u by dou y is uy. Dou v by dou x is vx that is minus vx. That means we are getting the CR equations. That is we satisfied or we proved the second condition in the theorem. That means we fruit the uh, partial derivatives exit and also we got the CR equations here. That means we can say is the proof.